Hello and welcome to the channel. Today I am excited to be getting into Aristotle's virtue theory on how to be happy and how that connects to the pursuit of virtue. And there's some debate as to how relevant his philosophies are for us today in our own attempts to be happy. I feel like it's still very relevant. It's a philosophy that I use all the time in my own life and my own pursuit of happiness, but you can learn about it and decide for yourself. I have a couple other videos here on very basic Aristotelian philosophy. So I did one on how to be authentic. It gets into kind of his notion of ideal forms, which I will recap very briefly in this video today because it does relate. But if you want any more information on that, you can see the full video there. And I did one on his notion of forms. So kind of body and soul, matter and form. What is the human person and how do we exist in the universe as creatures? Like who, who are we and what is our role in this? This world. You can also check that out. All of these things connect together, right? But if what you really are after is a little bit of knowledge on virtue theory, then stick around. We're going to get into it. So the very first thing I want to do is review this notion of the ideal form, because Aristotle believed that for everything, be it like plants, animals, humans, there was an ideal form that we are always reaching towards. That the closer we get to this, the the nearer we are to being who we truly are, and that that is also what brings us happiness, or what he called eudaimonia, which is the sort of deeper notion of happiness that had to do with the idea of living well. So it wasn't uh, an emotion. Eudaimonia is not just a feeling. It's like a state of being and something that you pursue throughout your life. And it comes from living with reason and virtue and kind of growing both of those within yourselves will lead you to achieving a state of eudaimonia. So back to this idea of ideal form, it was you were, you're pursuing the ideal form, you're pursuing eudaimonia, the two go together. And that your ideal form has not so much to do with like adding things onto yourself as to removing excess and things that are getting in the way. So I love the metaphor of a marble statue. Right. Rather than a sculpture where if I want to improve myself, I'm going to like add on more things. I'm going to like tack on virtues. It's more that I'm going to learn to find balance and, and chip away at the things that are getting getting in the way that my ideal form is already there. I'm not defining and creating myself. I'm discovering who I am. That's kind of an underlying philosophical notion that's important to this understanding of how do you pursue happiness in Aristotle's philosophy? Because in many ways today we view our pursuit of happiness as like something we need to go out and create for ourselves. And Aristotle would say, no, it's within yourself. You have to discover it. So we have this concept of ideal form. We have the pursuit of eudaimonia, like this trying to find a deep fulfillment rather than sort of a quick, shallow, easy type of happiness. Okay, so this leads us into virtue theory. And one of the important things about this, and one of the reasons I think I like it so much is it's focused very much on the individual, people and their characters, and less on specific circumstances or actions. The question is, how should I be? Not necessarily, what should I do? And that may sound like a kind of nit picky division, but it actually can make a really big difference. And I find it a very like open kind of freeing way to think. Personally, I tend to be much more rule bound and moralistic as an individual. So it's really easy for me to say, well, what is right and what is wrong in this situation and to feel kind of constrained. And I like this notion of how should I be as a broader concept? Like if I, if I do this choice, does it bring me closer to being the kind of person I want to be or maybe a little further away? There's a little more breathing room there. It feels less scary and less like there's blame involved. I think it's just a little bit more human. It's focused on the person, not so much on a sort of moralistic hair splitting of a what should you do. So this leads us to what is a virtue? Like how do we pursue virtue in the first place? So a virtue is a positive trait that you develop through habit and practice. You can't become virtuous through one good deed. It's a, it's a scale, right? It's how, who do I want to be? How do I want to live my life over and over again? So virtue is a continuous practice and it's a positive trait. This is why it ties back into some of the other videos is you need the underlying foundation of believing in absolute truth as opposed to relativism. And that's an important question. Is there such a thing as a positive trait? You can go down a whole rabbit hole with that. But for this video today, yes. Yes, there is such a thing as a positive positive versus a negative. Let's look at what that is. So he said that a virtue was the mean or the middle between two extremes. So that in any uh, character trait, you are looking for what he called the golden 
mean, like the very center, the sweet spot, and that on one extreme you had the vice of deficiency, so not enough of a certain trait, and that at the other extreme you had the vice of excess, too much of a trait. So for instance, you could be courageous, right? That's what you want. You want to be courageous right in the middle on the golden mean. If you have the vice of excess, you have too much of this trait that could be courageous, you become rash. It's like you're reckless. You don't actually think before jumping into the middle of dangerous situations. That's not actually courageous. That's rash. You're too far on one side. Whereas if you don't have enough of this characteristic that lends itself to courage, then you become timid or cowardly. You don't have enough of that sort of strength of will and willingness to take risks. So you could say like, okay, the question is, to what extent do I take risks? How do I handle fear? And you want to find the middle. You want to have a good balance of the two and have a sense of, do I tend to be more timid? Do I shy away from taking risks too much? Or in my personality, naturally, do I tend to be more rash? And so then how can I bring myself closer to the golden mean of being courageous? And this applies to any trait. It's really fun, actually, to spend a bit of time like thinking through them. What's what's the extreme of either one? So another one I really like is he talks about modesty. So modesty is what we want. And then if we have too little of this sort of good, healthy pride, actually, is what modesty relates to, then it makes us really shy. We're like afraid of who we are. We don't want other people to see us or speak to us. We're shy. And if we go way too far into excess, then we are shameful. We're behave. We're like putting ourselves out in a way that's disrespectful to who we are. We're not protecting ourselves or being guarded in an appropriate, modest way. So we want to find the, the golden mean there. We want to find right in the middle where's modesty. Same thing like with generosity. We want to be generous, giving people. We don't want to be stingy and holding off too much, never giving money. And we don't want to be profligate or like giving in excess, giving carelessly, right? And this is really fun. You can think about it in so many different virtues. I'll stick a chart in the description below because you can, there are a whole bunch. You can look up your own as well, but they list out just so many of the different virtues and kind of where they fall on the balance. And that's kind of fascinating. I think it makes an interesting study. And it's nice to think about for ourselves, what are these different traits? Where do I fall on the balance? I tend to fall towards the vice of deficiency. So I tend to be too cautious, too timid, I tend to hold back from entering into things. In general, if I'm kind of not sure what to do, lately, the last couple of years, I've started leaning towards pushing myself, like running the risk of excess is better for me because usually if I think I'm being excessive, I'm pretty close to the middle because I tend so much towards the other side. On most of the on, on most of the virtues, I tend really towards the vice of deficiency. And if you share any of my like perfectionistic nervous traits, you probably fall on that side as well. I like this too because it encompasses both extremes. I think a lot of times in the world, the people who get into a lot of trouble fall far onto the side of the vice of excess, right? Because if you tend to be excessive, then your errors are big and they're kind of public. But actually, that's not necessarily worse than having a vice of deficiency. It's just more visible. And I kind of like that this, in a way, sort of evens the playing field. It's like, well, are you coming towards the middle or not? Another interesting thing about his theory is that he looked at these in terms of sort of social norms as well. well Aristotle would even say there's like a virtue of being witty or like being fun to engage with in conversation. So even even things like in conversation, how we speak, he would put in terms of virtues and say that there's an ideal way to enter into conversation with other people too. There's an ideal way to interact with strangers on the street. I think the virtues we commonly think of like justice, temperance, courage, are usually emphasized more and a little bit easier to categorize. But I think it's interesting that he includes these kind of social ways of being as well that to him, every part of your life could fall in some way on this virtue theory chart. So then in terms of actually applying this, the important thing to keep in mind is that it is a practice. It's easy to look at this conceptually and go, oh, that's easy. That makes sense. I can do that. And hopefully it does make sense and you can do it, but it will take time. D this is about developing ourselves in like a really deep way. It's not, uh, it's not super fast. And Aristotle has this quote. He says, men become builders by building. 
We become just by doing just acts. So just the way we could look at a task like laying bricks to build a wall and say, oh, that's super easy. Actually, there's a lot of skill and technique involved and you're going to have to practice to get good at it. And just the same way, if you are pursuing a virtue, you're trying to lean yourself towards that golden mean, you'll probably think it sounds easy, give it a try, do a pretty bad job for a while and have to like really focus and like learn how to find that balance especially for those areas where we tend to be naturally very weak. We're going to have to work at it and really kind of focus on it for a while. And then with time, it'll get to be second nature and it becomes a habit. You can habituate courage and you can habituate modesty to where it's very easy for you and you don't think about it anymore. And it'll chip away at these areas of your life that used to be really difficult struggles. They will become easy, but they won't become easy at first. So we have to be prepared to put in some work and, and know that it's not a quick fix. And it's part, honestly, of why I put credence in this theory is I found in my own life, the good stuff, the really good stuff doesn't come easy. I wish it would. We seem to be obsessed with like quick fixes today and I understand why. They're really nice when they work. <laughs> but I think for ourselves as people, for like deepening our humanity and becoming clearer, truer versions of who we are, that's not quick. It's just not a quick fix. We're too complex. There's so much going on. And that's beautiful in a way because it gives us work to do for our entire life. And that really is actually a very beautiful thing. So I want to end with this quote from Will Durant in the 1800s. He says, we are what we repeatedly do. Excellence then is not an act, but a habit. And I think that sums up pretty well this notion of virtue theory. That's what I had for you today. I hope you found it helpful, a little bit enlightening. If you enjoyed this content, please do subscribe. That helps me out. <laughs> Either way, thank you very much for watching and I will see you next time.